What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Serie A career mode it is episode number 31 it's a brand new season as a fifth year gets underway once again back in the Champions League with a budget of 89 million euros boy are you kidding me I left 13 million in the budget last season this is the tightest board I've ever worked with back to back Champions League qualification and we still haven't got 100 million euros yet seriously Listen, I understand, don't get me wrong, you know, we inherited a, uh, uh, a poor Udinese side that needed an awful lot of work to it. I was, I was prepared, I was prepared to have small budgets for the first few years, but it's, it's our fifth year now, guys. It's our fifth year board. Like, you know, seriously, if you want me to do the big things you keep asking, which was last year, got back in the top four, and we only snuck in, I mean, we literally snuck in, in the final couple of games. Um, plus, gets the charity course, which you couldn't do last year. Um, and now you want me to win the Serie A. What do you want me to do? Win the Champions League as well? Reach the semi-finals. Win the Serie A! Guys! Inter are dominating. They've just won the free P. We ain't even won anything in the club's history. Oh, cool. Palmer did get promoted then in the end. That's, that's a nice thing to see. And we, we were saying last season how I really wanted Palmer to finally go up to the Serie A. And there we go. At the, uh, at the fourth time of asking him how he should do it, so they're up alongside Hellas Verona and, uh, and Palermo. Um, yeah, so, uh, right, uh, I'll, I'll quickly run you through the team then, uh, run you through the squad hub at least, and, and you'll see what we're, what we're working with for this season. Um, obviously, as, as I mentioned, we, we've agreed to loan out Marine. Uh, we, we did that, uh, that's Octavian Marine, not Marine Pongratich, obviously. Uh, we did that uh, at the end of last season. Um, and we, we probably will look to sell a couple of players as well. And then, of course, the, the big one... Uh, sorry, okay, we'll go through tomorrow. The big one is um, is is Oman. Oman, of course, the young Slovenian that came out of the academy. We were big on the kid. Um, and then, obviously, he came back from Wolves. He developed brilliantly. Now into the early 80s for overall. But, unfortunately, just couldn't get him in the game. Uh, get him in the team, sorry, last season. As these guys retained their potential successuals. Uh, because of the fact we just we just can't fit him into our system, playing the free at the back system, we need wide midfielders that can defend. Oman can't defend, and uh, of course because of Pafundi, he can't say play CAM either. So unfortunately, just a uh, an issue with the, um, the 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 lack of options as to how to get him into the team. So we are, we are going to get a bit of money for him. To be fair, to be fair, we will get some money for Oman. I'm thinking around sixty million euros. So that will increase the budget. To be fair, but. It, it's still a small budget, all things considered anyway. So the players they did was a come at the end of the year, several of which, and I'll probably give the majority new contracts. I'm not sure about Alexander Prass. I'll be honest, one of our first signings. Not really growing anymore at 79 overall, just a backup midfielder now. But I might give him one regardless. There's a few youngsters that will definitely get a new deal, such as uh, Bianco and Constantine Frank as well. Uh, but uh, yeah, the, the big departure is definitely going to be Oman. I can't talk him around. So we would again, to be fair, to be fair, get around 60 million euros for his sale, I'd say. And as Octavian Marine agrees to leave on loan, we do see the first coming of transfer offers. Uh, AC Milan wants Zielinski, but absolutely not, guys. I am not strengthening a division rival. A senior, homegrown, of course. That's why we brought him back. He's staying with us till retirement. Uh, but for Oman... I just realised the reason why we're not going to get as much money is because he's in the final year of his contract, so... <laughs> it just adds to the challenge. To be fair though, like, can I just say this? Like, I know sometimes it might sound like I'm, I'm complaining. In a way, I do kind of like it because it does add to the challenge. It does make it quite fun. So, uh, we're not actually going to get as much as I thought for the, uh, for the young Slovenian then. But I don't mind selling him to Crystal Palace. Uh, by the way, can I say, Glasner, since he came into Crystal Palace, I know I've mentioned it before, but what a job he has done there at Selhurst Park. And now, a great job in the negotiations as well. Because he knows he's got me bent over a barrel and I can't escape. He's going to have to go at some point, oh man. And I can't get any more than 43 million. Oh, I'll just take it. I'll just take it. He's, he's got to go at some point anyway in the final year of his deal. 43 million it is. And there we go. Oman, who was supposed to come back and be the boy wonder here at Udinese, unfortunately decided after returning from his loan spell at Wolves, he developed brilliantly under Gary O'Neill. He was like, you want me to sit on the bench, Gaffer? Absolutely not. I've shown you how good I am at modern you. And now he's returning back to the Premier League. Not to Wolves, but to Crystal Palace. 43 mil for Oman. 
And unfortunately there, we've, we've got less than I was hoping for. So it continues to add to the challenge. The, the most expensive departure to window, most likely, and it doesn't really raise our budget by much. Oof, speaking of Premier League clubs, bidding for our youngsters at the academy, the Gunners want Constantine Frank. But I like the look of this kid, man, I must say. I'm going to turn this one down, um, even though it's a, uh, a big European side putting a bid in, because I, I must say, I, I quite like the look of this guy. Oman was supposed to be the man who would kind of fill in in that role as a backup at attacking mid, but he's got potential to be special. Why has he got a thumbs down on his contract? You just agreed a new five-year extension, bro. Don't look at me. Look at your agent. Honestly. Um, but I, I like the look at this kid, man. Seriously, the dribbling is unbelievable. 84 agility, 89 ball control, 87 dribbling, 79 long shots as well with some fantastic play styles. Travela, relentless. You know I love that one there. Low defensive work rate is a bit of a shame, but other than that, this kid looks special. He looks really, really special. Um, and I might put him on the CM just to get that defensive work rate up. I, I often I often um, get asked this. Sometimes you might see me doing something strange, like having a winger on the CB development plan, and you might think, Doxy Boy, why are you retraining? For example, in my uh, Bournemouth slash Liverpool career mode, I was retraining a Berechi Eze to CB. And it's because when you do a position change, you can possibly change work rates or work on stats. You couldn't do so via development plans themselves if you look here there's no development plan i can put him on to improve the defensive work rate however if you put him on again like a cb or a cm you can get it up from low to medium and then if you want high as well so we're not actually going to change this guy to cm we're just going to improve the defensive work rate that way in terms of new signings for the team this year well there's a few players that i'm really really keen on I still can't get Matthew Companion. One day, one day he's going to return here. Uh, but there's several players that I am still quite keen on. And I must say, heading into the new season, I think that Christian Kwame is probably going to go. And I wouldn't mind an out-and-out well-class striker to make the difference. And there's three names I've got on the shortlist here. Lois Openda at uh, RB Leipzig. Uh, absolutely fantastic Belgian strike with 88 for finishing in the prime of his career. Alexander Isak at Newcastle United, who last year finished in ninth place in the Premier League and missed out on European football altogether. And Rasmus at Manchester United, of course, previously spent time in the Serie A with Atalanta. And I believe Manchester United missed out on the top four last season as well. But Looking at these two players here in particular, I, I must say, I, I'm not sure if I've used either of them before. Certainly not Rasmus. I don't remember using him before, but they're both out of contract come the end of the season. But working with the budget that we're currently working with, I think all three, yeah, all three are actually out of contract come the end of the season. Working with the budget that we're currently working with, We've, we've got to make sure we get a good value for money deal. And that's why I'd probably look at these two strikers here as opposed to Rasmus spending the majority of our money on the Dane. But Alexander Izak, again, Newcastle United, unlike RB Leipzig, who are back in the Champions League for this season, not playing European football at all this season. I'm not sure if I've signed him before, to be honest. I'm not sure I've used him before, but he would fit us perfectly. Six foot four, rapid, 88 jumping, 82 strength, 90 reactions, 90 dribbling, 89 finishing with 92 ball control as well. He's been loyal to the Magpies since joining, but now wanting to return to the Champions League. Let's bring him in. Yeah, I'm not sure if I've had him before. Um, do you know what I might have done, actually? Come to think of it, I might have done... When we uh, we did a brief, we, I, did, I did a brief Newcastle United career mode uh, last year. It was very very brief, only around for a few weeks. But I think I might have signed him whilst I was there. To be fair, um, but for sure I had, I haven't had him in uh, in one of my career modes this year. That's for sure. But again, because he's out of contract come the end of the season, 27 years old in the prime of his career right now, we should be able to get him for well under market valuation, and that's going to be so so helpful because you don't just want to sign one good player for the first team. No, Eddie, no, bro, any, anyone but him. Yeah, it's going to be so helpful because, again, working with that limited budget, okay, fair enough, we just got a bit of money for Oman from Crystal Palace, but it's still not much combined with what we started with. But for 70 million euros, 
Alexander Izak coming to the Blue Energy Stadium. This is going to be an absolutely world-class signing. Yes, I think I might have signed him in that brief Newcastle United career mode I did last year, but coming into this team, well, I'm really excited to have him, at least for the first time in FC24. Let's just say that. Because he's a heck of a forward, man. I've always been a massive fan of this guy, and since he moved on from Real Sociedad to St. James's Park, he's taken to life in the Premier League like a fish to water, and hopefully now it will come to Italy and have the same kind of instant impact. Yeah, coming in on a five-year, 200 grand a week Euro deal and returning to the Champions League to lead our line as our new number nine. Welcome to the Blue Energy Stadium, Alexander He's like, yeah, big fan of this guy, man. Big, big fan. I mean, he's so loved in the northeast of England, man. Honestly, the couple of years he spent playing for the Magpies. I mean, the fans just absolutely loved the guy. But last year, Newcastle finished in eighth place. Just checked, eighth place in the save. Uh, I mean, they missed out on European football together. So to bring this guy back to the Champions League, yeah, it's the perfect time to do so. So, yeah, buzzing with this. We should be able to get into around 88 overall during the season. And he will take Lorenzo Lucas' spot in the first 11 with the Italian Peter Crouch now dropping to the bench. And so I think that also means this now spells the end for our previous number nine. Christian Kwame, who don't get me wrong, I, I, I do like, I really do, especially as a guy coming off the bench, but now he's going to be third choice striker here. He's still got two years left in his deal, but I, I think personally, with Lorenzo now being our, uh, our stand-in for Alexander, it'll probably just be best to sell the Ivorian. So again, we can probably get around 25 to 30 million euros for the guy as well, so that'll raise our budget up a little bit as well. We'll add him to the transfer list and uh, let him go elsewhere. So on the back of that signing of Isak, this, this, again, there's still a bit of money to work with there. A good budget buy there for the Swedish international. Um, but I think what we'll do is we'll sell Kawame and then we'll decide what we do afterwards. I'm looking at the team right now thinking, where else would we improve? Well, we talked about this. The obvious answer is between the sticks. He, he might have won the Golden Glove, but let's be honest, he's error-prone, Fatos. He's just a boy. He does make the occasional mistake and does leak quite a few simple goals as well. There are a couple of options. I know some of you might be thinking, why not bring Vicario back? You love those homegrown talents. Uh, unfortunately, can't get him at the moment due to a lack of depth for Spurs. But also, possibly on that right-hand side, replacing Festia Bocelli. Or maybe a new centre after replace Marion Pongratis, who's now approaching 30. I don't know. I think we'll sell Kawami and decide what we're going to do after that. There is a big bid for our Austrian centre-half, Leopold Querfeld from FSV Mainz, but I'm going to turn this one down because he's now only a rating lower than Pongracic, and you know, in the past two years I've had bids, big bids for Pongracic, but turned them both down. I might well actually sell him this time around and favour the young Austrian instead. But uh, oh, that's the, that's the goalkeeper I wanted there, Merritt, now wanted by RB Leipzig. Um, so Bilbao want to take Kawame, not realistic, unfortunately, he's not got any basket in. So I'll wait for another bid to come in. But they will quickly, uh, quickly delegate that loan offer there for Coman. Um, yeah, so Merritt um, is also homegrown. And last year, Napoli missed out on European football uh, altogether, I think. Well, actually, I think they might have got Conference League. I think they might have got Conference League. I think they finished seventh last year. But uh, for Vicario, unfortunately, I, I really, I, I wanted to bring this guy back so badly, man. We talked about it a lot. Udinese have just a great history of producing excellent young goalkeepers. Scuffet, Meret, Vicario, and of course, the legendary Dino Zoff as well. Uh, but unfortunately, I can't get Vicario because there's just not enough depth there at Spurs. Would that be in the case? What I might do is bring back Alex Merritt, who was born in Udine. And we don't have to start him. We could still start Fatos and probably just have Merritt as a uh, as a cup goalkeeper for the year and then sell him next season and then next season bring back Vicario. That's not a bad option because we had Simone for a year before he left to Valencia. That's not a bad option. Bring back Merritt for the year, possibly have him as a cup goalkeeper and then once he requests a transfer, because let's be honest, he would, we could then bring back Vicario. That's not a bad option there, especially with Merritt out of contract coming in the season and available on a cup price deal. That's a pretty decent strategy. Let's bring him in. What I might do is offer them Pizignasso as well, who, of course, we brought back from Ferro Pasalo. But we're going to, we only need four goalkeepers here. And the reason we keep Sam Well is because he, A, doesn't complain about a lack of game time. B, is on a super cheap contract, which you barely even notice paying. And C, is officially homegrown and trained in the club. So what we might do is offer them Sam Well 
uh, and then give them, let's say, around 22, 23 million euros. We're going with 21 million euros. And, uh, and that way, we stay at three goalkeepers in the first team. But we bring back someone. Okay, there we go. They do want him as well. We bring back someone who uh, who is completely, officially, for guaranteed, homegrown in Alex Merritt, who was actually born in Udine himself. himself. I like that. 21 mil plus a goalkeeper that's homegrown and trained in a nation, but not trained by the club. And uh, possibly a new number one here. Part of being a top level manager means you need to make very tough decisions. And as much as we love Fatos Gashu's being our number one for three straight years from a season start to the end. He might have won a Golden Glove last year, but let's be honest, he cost us some points with some sus goalkeeping. And I do feel as though, if nothing else, he can do with a bit of competition in our first team. He's certainly got some now. Yeah, a few caps for Italy and part of Napoli's team for the past few years, but now returning to Udine on a cut price deal. I'm pretty pleased, even if this season might be his only one returning. Welcome back to the Blue Energy Stadium, Alex Merritt. Yep, 30 years old, so he is 10 years older than Fatos and five ratings higher as well. We still, again, we still might keep Gashi as our number one. He keeps the number one jersey number. Um, but I, I, I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see. I just feel as though if we are to make the next step, we might need to make that very difficult decision of dropping Gashi to the bench and just having him as a cup goalkeeper, if not a starter. But even so, we've uh, we've got him. We've got him. Alex Merritt is in again. It might be the year here, but I guess we'll. Uh, I guess we'll see. I think for now, tough decision. But I probably will put Fatus on the bench and have him as a cup goalkeeper. As we see another bid for Cyprian Coman, which we will delegate real quick. Uh, we see another offer for Christian Kawame there. And this time, wow, this time from Bayern Munich, which I uh, I don't mind selling him there instead. We'll try and get around 32.5 mil. Is there, uh, is there Harry Kane successor, possibly 32.5 mil? And um, Bayern Munich say, yeah. Yeah, I don't mind Christian Kwame. A couple of years here battling with Lorenzo Luca, but obviously now we signed Alexander Izak. He's just never going to play. And uh, there we go. As Coman agrees to go out on loan, we do see the sale of Christian Kwame. 32.5 mil. So we make a profit on the Ivorian as well. But again, I didn't mind it was a backup for Lorenzo Luca or even starting ahead of Lorenzo Luca at times when the Italian giant was either injured or needed a breather. But again, now third choice in this team. Put it this way, he wasn't happy coming off the bench. He's certainly got to be happy if he can't even make the bench. So yeah, we'll take the 32.5 mil as he's off to the Allianz Arena in Munich. And that now rises our budget up to around 50 million euros. There's, there's still some money to play with, but I'd say, I'd say looking at the team now... I don't really know where else to invest. I mean, if I was looking anywhere, I probably would say on that right-hand side, possibly having Festier Bosselli now coming off the bench and bringing in a new star right midfielder. Because um, obviously the only back we've got is Indukidi, who obviously doesn't quite measure up. Um, but other than that, really, I'm, I'm happy with the team, to be honest, right now. Again, maybe... Maybe sell Pongratis and bring in a star centre half, but other, we don't need to. So other than that, I think we're all right here. Oof, this is a big bid for Ricardo Calafiori, wanted by Valencia. Uh, of course, going to turn it down, but look at that, including Diego Lopez as part of the deal. Of course, we will turn it down and block the office, though. He's going nowhere. Um... Yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's something we've, we've discussed quite a bit in this year's FC. It's, it's a lesson not just for FC career mode, but also for life as well. It's something that I learned the hard way, painfully, a little late in life. And I wish I would have learned it earlier. But just because you've got money doesn't mean you need to spend it. Man, I wish I would have learned that in my, in my early 20s. <laughs> but uh, still, 50 million euros. Don't, ha don't have to spend it. Don't have to spend it. We can keep it. As uh, Montpellier won our Chilean DM. But I do want to make sure we've got enough squad depth here as well. Last season, that was a bit of an issue for us, a lack of squad depth. So I do want to make sure we've got enough depth here. Right, this time it's the first game of the season. Then it is indeed newly promoted Palmer at the Blue Energy Stadium. Man, I am so buzzing. They are finally here in the Serie A at the fifth season. And of course, returns to the Serie A for next year in real life as well. Cannot wait to watch some of their games, man. Honestly, going to be so fun. But heading into the game, I will start Isaac. But I'm going to keep Fatos between the sticks, man. I just don't have the heart to drop the kid yet. Even so, match day one, let's start for the win for Zudinezo. Just, I just can't do it to, to Fatos, man. Like, seriously, I know I know he's uh, he's made an awful lot of errors, but he's also made some good saves to the, to the kid's credit as well. Um, he's not just lost me points, but won me points too. 
And it's the super gash, bros, man. Like, if you've got to start, if you're going to start one, you've got to start them both, right? As his bro, Jurge, is denied the opening goal seven minutes in. But Isaac's getting the start. Isaac's getting the start with Lorenzo dropping to the bench. I might try and renegotiate a new contract with Lorenzo as well. Yes! And just make him a, uh, a rotation player in his contract too. But the perfect start for the cheat code. Eight minutes in and it is the skipper heading us in front. Easy, easy, easy. There's... Oh my goodness. I think he's got to save that, hasn't he? Oh, Fattis. I don't want to drop him, man. I really don't. But he's just... Put it this way, Alex Merritt, I think, gets gloves on that. That's not right in the corner. It's struck with not a lot of power. I think he's got to save that. I really do. I don't know, I don't know man. I don't know. I mean, the, the, the third option that we haven't really considered is loan him out. I mean, we could just loan him out. We see, we saw what the loan did for his bro in, uh, in Germany. We could just loan him out and hope he'll grow just the same, but... It's just such a difficult call, man. Oh, Fatos. Fatos, Fatos, Fatos. There's, oh, Alexander. Isaac, wonderful. Oh, what a goal. And if that is a taste of what's to come, well, maybe like last season we'll concede a lot, but we just need to score more. We were the second highest scorers last year in the Serie A. And this year, we want to score more than anyone else. So if Alexander Isaac coming in, that's a great possibility. Lovely step over to beat the defender, and the finish just as good. Dream debut for the Swede. Yes, Fatos, unfortunately, isn't isn't quite the same as, uh, as Lance Knight. For those to watch my... Uh, Fulham career mode before this one. Lance Knight came through the academy. We loaned him out to the Hawthorns. He grew brilliantly in two years with West Brom. And uh, he came back and... Well, un un unlike Fatos, um, he just he just hit the ground running. Whereas for Fatos, we've we've kind of made excuses for him. We've kind of made exceptions for him due to his, uh, his young age. Whereas Lance, despite his young age, I mean, he just... He, he came to the Premier League and just dominated. So it's a, it's, it's a tough one. It's a really tough one. But like I said, man, if we can't defend, if we are going to concede like last year, just need to score more. Alexander Izak understands the assignment. Two goals in 44 minutes on his debut. No doubt about it. Three strikers on the shortlist. I think already it's looking like we've made the right call there. And he might get involved in the build-up for a fourth goal. Jurji denied as we still lead by three. Yeah, defending once again looking quite fragile. But going forward tonight... Looking unstoppable. Yeah, big decisions to be made on who will be our starting goalkeeper for this year. But uh, I think already on match day one, my mind's made up on who will be our starting striker. Yeah, we love the Italian Peter Crouch. We love Lorenzo Luca, But, I mean, Alexander Izak is just a step up, isn't he? Let's be honest here. He is, he is that step up. And it's Pratty. Oh, scores a wonderful goal. To make it four. Absolutely dominant here in Udine tonight, man. I mean, don't get me wrong. Newly promoted side, taking on a side last year, finishing the top four. And have ambitions of being in a title race. Expected it to go one way, but even so. 55 minutes in, we scored four. Could have had about five or six, though, really. Pretty to Profundi. Now Isaac. Back to Profundi. Just trying to get... Gashi in on the action too. Oh, Rocket. Right in the top corner. And it is five. You know, if if we didn't concede that goal and if I was a little bit more clinical. Do you remember last season when I had the biggest win I've had so far on FC? 8-0. I have to say, this, this could go down as a missed opportunity. Despite a massive win on match day one, we could have possibly equaled that scoreline. Naturally, there will be a lot of questions still to be asked about who should be our starting goalkeeper for this season. But as for who should start up top... Yeah, I think we already know who that will be after just one game. What a performance from Alexander Izak. A brace in a massive 5-1 victory over Parma as our Udinese side, who have been asked to win the title this year, get off to an almost perfect start. But that will do it for today's episode of the Serie A Grimo, guys. So big thank you for watching. We really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have done, please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. I will return in the next episode with the final week of the summer trance window, where there is still over 50 million euros to spend, and we still might make another signing to add to our team. We'll have more games in the Serie A aiming to build on the opening day victory against Parma and we'll have the draw for the Champions League group stage where hopefully, unlike last year, we'll avoid a group of death. Have a great day guys, much love and I'll see you for the next episode very soon.